We are recording. Hey, Caitlin. Oh, hi. Hi, Zach. Hello. Zach's here too, and we got him a better microphone. So I did an Amazon right. Express delivery, and he got something on Saturday, but he's not—he doesn't have all of it. So the tripod's not coming till tomorrow, I think. But he made it work. Yep, I made it work. Perpetual Boy Scout. Were you so a Boy now, Scout? No. no. No, I was. Shoot. Um, well, there you go. Between the two of you. Yeah, we got one. I mean, his parents would have had to pay for a lot of Boy Scout fees. Like, like out three, the nose. Three in a yeah. row. It's a I think, lot. I did go to one meeting, but. <laughs> and then you decided it wasn't for you. <laughs> you were like, yeah, nope. I don't know if it was my decision or my parents' decision. They mm -hmm. decided they didn't want to keep doing it, but yeah. Yeah. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, now Zach can jump in anytime we need him to, which is a good thing because he's a guest today. Yes. Yep. Just from the top, though. Uh, I really want to jump into this cocktail because I sent the recipe to my in-home bartender husband, and he was like, that sounds like a great cocktail for me and terrible for everyone else because he likes super proofy, horrible, nasty stuff. Oh, I think this and one sounds fantastic. I, I, chartreuse. I love Both of this you recipe. like chartreuse much more. So this <laughs> recipe was created entirely using HubSpot's content assistant, which we'll get to in a minute. Wait, but what? I'm wondering, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. So this uh -huh. is a fake recipe? Like it's not even no, something No, it's not fake. I mean, it's real, but yeah. it's... Uh... But it's not like you can't go to a bar and like, I'd like an enchanted elixir. And no, yeah, I don't, it's yeah. created. It was created by Content Assistant with so some did prompting. You, I was gonna say, did you okay. tell it to use green chartreuse? Yeah, I told it to use. I chartreuse. thought so. I was like, well, <laughs> if you, the way it works is you can highlight like text in a blog, and then like click expand, and it'll create full recipes for it. So it was really interesting to see how like how much you could push it, but we'll get more into that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like okay. this is how in the 70s we got the like jello and green olive salads and things. <laughs> like those keep coming up. No, I think that was like a food science lab. That they were like, oh, look at all these chemicals we can pour into stuff. And so they just spent like buku dollars on R&D yeah, to what see was like, what kind like... of weird shit you could come up I with. I think it was actually products like Jello trying to make yeah. like be more than just a dessert. So they're like, That's what I'm saying. how do we make savory Jello things? And it's <laughs> like, you don't. Please don't. Don't Please stop. Barely even make sweet Jello because uh, eh. nope. <laughs> all right. So this one I think is okay. It's got two ounces of booze in it. So I'm gonna just say that's fine. Um, but Caitlin one will hate that. it. One and a yeah, half ounces this of is green not, it's chartreuse. Like once you once you get past the chartreuse, I'm like, actually, this sounds good. You would just use gin instead of chartreuse. Probably. <laughs> it would honestly probably be fantastic like that. But yeah. the chartreuse is going to give it an interesting kick. Oh, I can't. All it, right. Like, so well, HubSpot. I can't think about it past my throat. It just right. makes me like. I'll roll the recipe so you don't have to vomit. <laughs> So this was the Enchanted Elixir, Enchanted because it was pulled out of thin air-ish with a couple prompts from Zach by HubSpot's content assistant. Um, one and a half ounces of green chartreuse, uh, which we are sort of two thirds of us are in on that. The other one is not. A half an ounce of elderflower liqueur, which we all love. Yes. Three quarter ounces of fresh lime juice. Go ahead and tell me, love. Caitlin. Love, always fresh. Yes, always Never squeeze frozen. it yourself. Squeeze it yourself. <laughs> A half an ounce of honey syrup. Now, honey syrup is a one-to-one -one ratio of honey to water. So basically, it's a little bit of watered-down honey. Mm -hmm. um, three to four cucumber slices. Okay, I'm losing I'm losing it a little bit here. Oh, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the cucumber plays with the chartreuse, but it does play really nicely with gin. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, like trying to make it as botanical <laughs> as possible. It sounds like it. Did you ask it to be botanical? It gave me some options, and I was like, this oh. sounds like the least bad, and honestly, I might <laughs> try it. <laughs> All right, so then fresh mint leaves, soda water, and ice cubes. So you've got to have a cocktail shaker, and you actually muddle the cucumber and some of the mint leaves. I'm um, guessing you save a few of those for a garnish. But then you add the chartreuse, the elderflower liqueur, lime juice, and honey syrup. Uh, fill it with ice. Shake it like crazy. It says 10 to 15 seconds. That'll chill and combine everything. 
Um, double strain the mixture into a highball glass filled with fresh ice cubes. Wow, a double strain on this one. Probably just so in you case. don't end up with mint leaf. Yeah. Detritus. I don't. Yes. I don't know what it is, but it loves like every cocktail is like put this in a highball glass, like every single one. It loves like yeah. the highball glasses and stuff. Because <laughs> one of the other ones was a hub spot highball, which was. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. You but... must have branded glassware or you may not drink this cocktail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was it orange at least, I hope? Um, okay, with this one, so we've double stranded into our highball glass. I would argue you could put it in a coupe glass without ice if you wanted <laughs> yeah. to. I love a coupe glass, which we all know. Top it off with soda water to give you a little bit of fizziness. Garnish with a slice of cucumber and a sprig of fresh mint. Stir gently to incorporate the garnish. This feels like overkill. That's step that seven. Step seven is bad. not. Ignore that. And then step eight is enjoy, which again, two of us would. Uh, Caitlin would not, but she would just give it to her husband and he would drink it and he would love it. Yeah. So I think I'm pretty sure that I got cucumber in my farmer's market share last week that I have not eaten yet. Mm. And we have uh, an overgrown raised bed of mint leaves so i might try this both with gin and with chartreuse and i'll report back i think that'd be good so the the flavors that this tells is herbaceous and complex floral zesty fresh subtly (laughs) sweet it's a lot of things going on it's all um, the things it really does seem like all the things i think with like most things in ai like it gives you a good start and then you kind of gotta like you need to peel it back or edit yep. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So wait, I can't just have AI write all my blog posts, Zach, and just use them verbatim as they come out? It's not accurate and true? No. Good one. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's uh, <laughs> put, a, put a pin in this unique and enchanting cocktail experience, and we will be back to talk about HubSpot's AI tools. All right. We're back. Uh, This is going to be an interesting episode wherein I will try to temper my fear of our AI overlords and and channel some excitement into the potential that is held by HubSpot's content assistant and their uh, burgeoning chatbot. So with that, Zach, can you tell us a little bit about these new tools? Sure. If we start with the content assistant tool, uh, it integrates with your existing content marketing tools. So it allows you to use like AI to generate and share content within hubs, like the HubSpot ecosystem that you already mm-hmm. use without having to copy and paste it over from chat GPT or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, it makes it really easy to generate like emails, blog posts, social copy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas ChatSpot AI is an open AI, GPT-3, and da- DAL-E powered app mm. that you can choose to integrate with your HubSpot CRM, which by the way, this is in public alpha and uh, Content Assistant is in public beta. But okay. once you integrate ChatSpot into your CRM, you can. it's more like of a conversational thing where you can use it to accomplish uh, different CRM related tasks. So sending follow-up emails, servicing non-contacted leads, viewing deal status within seconds. And it also mm. makes uh, your like CRM data easy accessible to sales, marketing, and growth and service professionals. So, Well, that sounds like a sales line. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it is. I mean, really it is. I had like Salesy. misinterpreted the chat spot. I assumed it was like a chat flow tool. That seems mm-hmm. like a misnomer. So they have the chat tool that, yeah. that has a chat flow, but the AI, I don't believe, ties into that yet. I'm yeah, sure it that, will. Right. This is more like, and honestly, like HubSpot search has been one of the things that drives me crazy. And they've made some improvements mm-hmm. this year. We had a couple that came through about a week ago mm-hmm. um, about what you can and can't search for and the way it gives you results. And yeah. so um, I don't know if we've turned on the chat spot AI in our hub. I don't think we have. Not yet. That because I, I asked it something about a report and it just gave me this pages of like, it's it's kind of like the old Siri when you would ask it something and it would say, here's what I found on the web and then start reading you headlines and URLs from the web. And you're like, that's not helpful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so this that could be really interesting. But I think the bigger one is the content assistant. 
um, cause content is what people are like using it for. And also a bit frightened for, and honestly, it's a part of what the SAG after strike is all about. Mm-hmm. And the writer's guild strike is about, um, is, you know, AI and what they can do and the whole, like, you can scan my body once and then use me in as many films as you want and not pay me. Yeah. You're getting to the heart of my concern with AI is kind of twofold. And one of them is intellectual property that Mm -hmm. really this, it's not generative AI, it's scraping. So it's like, Yes. It's not creating a new idea on your behalf. It's using like large language prediction to create new quote unquote content when really what it's doing is scraping all of the existing stuff on the website and coming up with a prediction. It's not like creating a new idea. And so I just, I have a hard time with the fine line between new and existing intellectual property. Well, and that's uh, part of the writer's guild issue is mm-hmm. they want guarantees that scripts and things are prevented from being scraped. Right. And uh, publishers are also looking at in author agreements, they're looking for you know publishers to guarantee that their original manuscript won't be scraped. And the publishers mm-hmm. are like, those tools don't exist. Like we can't guarantee that today. Um, and it's, it's becoming a real problem. Like, cause I heard a thing about, it was actually just this morning on NPR about AI and writers, like authors. And, mm-hmm. um, I was like, oh, it's about like, how much will the publisher allow the author to use AI to assist writing the book? And that was not it at all. No, hundred percent. Not it's the writers. Like I, this comes out of my brain. I mm-hmm. don't want it to be part of this global think for AI. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, definitely like like a lot to think about there so (laughs) here's a question though caitlin like Mm -hmm. when i come up with an idea for something isn't it based on me quote unquote scraping everything that i've encountered and known in my Mm -hmm. life and my history Mm -hmm. and people who've told me stories photos i've seen places i visited yeah i think the difference the difference for me though is that like you do not have the entirety of human knowledge (laughs) with like stored at your fingertips inside of your brain. Oh, ouch. I thought I did. I I know it's like you are very smart, but you haven't quite nailed that one. Yeah. No, it's a volume thing. Yeah. It's yeah. The other, the other piece of my concern around the prediction is that it's not necessarily based in fact, like Mm -hmm. I think, GPT-4 was working on source citations, but it's, it's like I said, it's a language predictor. It's not a, like a sourced, factual, like, means of information. And so it could yep. scrape something that sounds really good, but has actual no actual basis in fact. So, Zach, when you were doing the cocktails, did you get some that just looked like they would be absolutely disgusting? Like it's just putting things together that no one should ever drink. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we should, I think have, when, like, we should have had an outtakes. Like I will never drink. I won't drink this <laughs> chartreuse nonsense, but I would be curious to know what some of the others that were left on the cutting room floor <laughs> might have been. <laughs> They're pretty gross. Um, I bet. Something that I thought was the only like, I guess like, bad thing about the one I chose was the cucumber and just the fact that you have to mix it so much. Yeah. You muddle everything like, so this one does seem overdone, but it does seem drinkable. But I think this Mm -hmm. is the point with AI and kind of where we're at on, I mean, it's ethical AI use, I guess, Mm -hmm. is kind of what you did Zach with this. You got a bunch of ideas and there were a whole bunch that you just knew on their face were just not good, not right. You threw those out. You took a couple that looked good and you refined them and used your brain to help guide Mm -hmm. the AI to get it to a place that made sense. Um, I think good with that. I think there is some like actual, like, I don't want to say like skill, but definitely like time and like effort towards actually creating something that sounds good and is mm-hmm. good through with AI because um what I like about like HubSpot's content assistant is that it helps you it's not prompt based more of it's like you already write something you highlight it and you can expand upon it it'll give you suggestions mm-hmm. for how to write it'll rewrite things for you with like 
a better or different tone of voice that you can set. So that's something that I really like because when I'm going in and editing these episode posts, like I'll start writing a paragraph out and I'll be like, well, like what does the content assistant like think about this or like what, Mm -hmm. like maybe I can like strengthen this by like just seeing what it has to say. And I think that's like what I like about it for sure. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you're mad at somebody and you write that letter that you're never going to send to them <laughs> that just rips them a new one. So you do that and then you highlight it all and you have HubSpot's content assistant say like, this is this what I want to say, but make it nice and friendly. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. like dials it back for you and softens it a little bit. That might be a fun experiment to try. <laughs> I'm going to need to be really mad at somebody though. And I haven't been like that mad in a long time. My therapist asked me like, when was the last time you screamed at somebody? And I'm like, gosh, I don't think it was 2009 that I know of. God bless SSRIs. Am I right? Yes. Yes. A hundred (laughs) percent. We talked about that too. The the benefit of that morning Zoloft. Um, (laughs) Okay, so I you think... use it for revising and editing something that you've already created. Yeah, was one of the questions. The recipe was me trying to push it kind of to its limits because it's not a, it's not like ChatGPT. It's not like a conversational like yeah. prompt based thing, mm-hmm. but you can kind okay. of like gain like you can kind of like mess around with it and get it to be like a prompt based thing. Like if you type in the blog like okay, write me a res- a cocktail recipe that's where like the HubSpot highball came in because I was trying to create like, see like, okay, like if I click expand, will it really write a full recipe for me just based off of me asking it to write Mm -hmm. a recipe? And that it was horrible. (laughs) Like the recipe (laughs) that I came up with, but yeah, it's not as conversational. It's more like it says, it's more to assist like you in creating content, Mm -hmm. which I definitely think could be good for small businesses now. Like, especially like, if you like don't have the time to like put into like writing full blog posts, like maybe you know what you want to write about and the things you want to write about, Mm -hmm. it can generate paragraphs for you, but it can also create an outline for you to actually write it yourself. So So that's what I've seen a lot of people using AI for is AI, like they have the topic. So we've seen two things. One is, you know, telling, asking AI to give me 10 topics on digital marketing and it gives you the topics. Mm -hmm. The other one I've seen is I have this topic give me an outline in that's four parts and it'll give you kind of a beginning, a middle and an end on it. Um, and I've seen that that's and that makes parts, a lot of sense to me. So well, the, the, the beginning, a middle, a middle and an end. <laughs> How about this? A beginning, a middle, a denouement and an end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> something anyway. That, something that I really like doing with it is like to create new topic lists. I've done this with GPT for like blog topics, Mm -hmm. experimenting with giving it keywords with like actual like volume and like keyword difficulties Mm. and seeing like what it can come up with based off of what I give it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does a decent job of like pulling just like, like title ideas, things like that with like a Mm -hmm. short paragraph of like what you could write about. Yeah. But like mostly like, I would say like there's some really good ones after a lot of prompting, like, you don't really have to fix them like in terms of like the topic t- itself mm-hmm. but then others it's just like there, there's no way you'd ever use it in your entire life yeah <laughs> but yeah it's definitely very like from like a content perspective it kind of streamlines the, the like the ideation part of it yeah just it's a very helpful tool with, for that part because it's have easy you... to get bogged down with like writer's block and mm-hmm. things like that have you tried having it write any emails yet? I'm just curious. Like like if Caitlin had to have a difficult conversation with a client who's always late with everything they get back to her and she wanted like some helps and prompts, um, completely fictional situation here, folks. Um, every client gets us everything on time always, um, 100%. Um, <laughs> just curious like if it could help out with that. Like would she need to start drafting the email to like get so, it to pull more together? You... So you can like, you can start from zero and say, write a mark, something like write a marketing email off marketing email, offering a promotional 10% discount or something. Right. And it'll write that for you and give you ideas. But like, like, uh, the way it would work in that kind of an email 
is if you already knew kind of what you wanted to say, you could highlight the text and then mm -hmm. change the tone, mm -hmm. expand, rewrite, things like that. Um, you can also just start from basic prompts too, but. Okay. I'm curious, like, so I know Google has been working on that as well, like with their AI and having it help mm -hmm. with emails. Like they've already got the sort of predictive stuff when you're typing yeah. and, you know, it tries to finish your sentence for you and you can hit the space bar and it can be done. Here's, um, here's where I will say, God bless the AI overlords is when it scans your email and it says, you said you were going to attach something, but there's no attachment. Like how many times has that <laughs> saved my ass? Yes. Correct. Please. I will take more of that. Time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you said you were going to take your suitcase off the airplane and you have no suitcase in your hand. It's still right. on the airplane. I've only done that once uh, and I was able to get back on the plane and get it. So I had to I know. Um, carry on. I'm also, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. The, the key to getting back on a plane and getting your suitcase is just to do it and not tell anybody. But I didn't say that. Um, and then if the flight attendant's PSA like, you would recognize pre -check you. just was rescinded for you. They just mm, took it away. No, not really. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, well, I guess Google's another thing like, that's yeah. really cool about it is when you're in the settings of a like blog, it'll generate uh, a meta description based off of the mm -hmm. things that are already in your blog copy. So hmm. it misses. The thing that it kind of struggles with is making sure it's the correct character count, like the optimized character mm -hmm. count. But, I think that would be easy. Well, it's yeah, like, it's a number. Like, come on. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it does that. It also does like title ideas. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a yeah. part of their like roadmap, they are like working on like SEO suggestions. I'm not sure if it's yet out yet, but mm -hmm. basically like it'll scan your website and automatically surface opportunities for optimization. I think it already does mm. that like to a point, doesn't it? Where it can like scan a domain. Yeah, it'll, s yes. it'll send you like pay or pop up page suggestions but it's not necessarily like what the content should be it's just like you haven't filled this part out or this is too long it doesn't necessarily say like here's how to improve it yeah i mean and they so hubs what's interesting with seo they've had a love-hate journey with it so they had a pretty decent seo tool like three or four years ago and then they almost dumped seo altogether, and then they started like slowly bringing it back and now i know they've been doing some things with semrush to uh you know, to bring more SEO features in there. And I think AI is going to help with that. Um, it's a logical place for it to work. Mm -hmm. um, what I wonder with HubSpot though, is they have so much data on your own, you know, CRM database, yeah. the information that you've sent. And I know that ChatSpot is now working on like, you know, it can pull together people you haven't engaged with in the last 60 days or 30 days and that type of thing mm -hmm. um, and give you suggestions. I'm just wondering where that kind of, merger is going to come like would it pop up an email for me that says we recommend you send this email to zach today like so that's oh, yeah. where they're going with it it technically can do some of the things that content assistant can do since it's powered through like those existing platforms mm -hmm. it can draft like full blog copy and stuff like that but where mm. it's really going to be cool is like doing things like for like reporting, you could say, show me a monthly summary of web visits for last year. And it'll instantly pull up a report for that. I'm not sure like how, <laughs> quite how it works yet because yeah. I have not been able to use it, but it seems like it's gonna like simplify a lot of like, of those like menial time tasks. consuming tasks, like mm -hmm. menial tasks, yeah. My question in terms of customer data, especially is like, is that privatized or randomized? Like how, how are they ensuring that we are upholding like data privacy and cleanliness standards? Well, I mean, you have to check a box that says, please avoid sharing any sensitive information in your prompts. <laughs> I mean, I really? I think that's a big question about AI. Yeah, it's on the, the and that's Yeah, that's just a, a question assistant. in general, not necessarily as a person. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it is, but. I mean, I think that's one of the big questions, right? Is like to mm -hmm. the point of the, the writer saying like, how do you guarantee publisher that my stuff won't be scraped? Well, we can't. And. Mm -hmm. It's like, where is that? Like, there's not a no crawl tag like there is for Google right. for AI. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, so it's just scraping and grabbing everything. 
Um, and I think that's going to be the biggest challenge. And I think as companies like HubSpot and Microsoft and Google start using this, like the technology on its own is just open, but as companies start using this and potentially monetizing it, they're going to have to figure out some of those safeguards. That and like, why does a giant conglomerate like a Microsoft or a Google get to profit from my personal data? Like, when do I begin to see that <laughs> return? Because if my data is so valuable to me or so valuable to someone, at what point do we begin being compensated for that? So like in terms of, of that like trade-off, I'm pro-union all day, every day. Yeah, and it's, I think, and I think part of the issue with those negotiations is probably, again, I don't know anything about it. I'm not a member. I, I mean, I know actors and, you know, people in the industry, right. of course. But I think part of it is, you know, how does the studio make some of these guarantees? Like, can they guarantee they won't scan somebody and then make 20 movies from them without paying them? Yes. That's a thing that they would have to proactively do. But right. can they guarantee that scripts and finished movies won't be scraped by AI and used to produce ripoff content in another country that has looser mm -hmm. trademark laws? Nope. Mm -hmm. They can't really guarantee that. And I yeah. think that's where, you know, even giving a reasonable effort to do that is helpful, but reasonable yeah. effort generally doesn't get you very far. It's an effort. Yay. Yeah. I tried. That's, is that all you have to mm -hmm. say? I made a re what, and who defines what reasonable is? Like, what is a reasonable effort? Because it might mean something entirely different to you. Right. Yeah. It might mean I asked once and they said no. And I said, okay. And it might, okay, you bye. might be expecting me mm -hmm. to have, like actually sent them a letter from my lawyer and done yeah. some other stuff and done a DMCA takedown or whatever. So yeah, I think um, it's interesting. So we do have ChatSpot turned on in our hub, by the way. I just looked at it. Um, <laughs> I haven't really done That's anything cool. with it yet, but um, there it's it is. there if you need it. Time to start testing it out. <laughs> yeah, I will need to, to test it out. Uh, being the old man in the office, I'll just put that hat on. No, I'm not afraid of new technology, obviously, and I've used you know ChatGPT and some other things already. Um, I just haven't used that in particular inside of HubSpot because I haven't really had a need to yet. Um, yeah. I don't because create a lot of work. You are content. so skilled at generating your own ideas. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Uh, I mean, if it can help get me like halfway there, though, I'll do more and I'll be more likely to get off mm -hmm. of that like writer's block hump or that like yeah. procrastination. Like, I don't know where this is going to go. So I'm just going to procrastinate and maybe not do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely helps there, like the procrastination part or like if you're stuck, it's like there's finally like a tool you can use to kind of get you out of that rut. And it's actually yeah. been pretty helpful. So in terms of like data, uh, one of the frequently asked questions is if Content uh -huh. Assistant is SOC2, SOC2 compliant, which Soft do you two. yeah? Do you guys know what that is? uh brief vaguely but i can't remember what soc it's a voluntary for. compliance standard for service organizations developed by the american yep. institute of cpas which specifies how organizers should manage customer data okay it's yeah. based on the trust services criteria security availability processing integrity confidentiality and privacy and currently okay. as it stands hotspot does not include beta tools within the scope of the soc to report yeah a lot of beta stuff isn't it just it can't be so that's yeah. you know potentially problematic but they they say they've implemented controls to ensure security availability and confidentiality of this tool and the associated da data so just to answer I mean, your question from earlier yeah and HubSpot does have some pretty good security on everything like they're pretty buttoned up i've had to mm -hmm. dig into that for clients um and i think that that just is a question like emerging technologies are always going to have right. security loopholes um they just will and that's i think part of why they put it out as beta or even alpha and part of what you're signing off on and apple does this with their beta software too is that this may not work right and it may cause problems and you're mm -hmm. knowingly and doing something that's not ready for prime time yet yeah. um do, does that mean I should start reading the privacy policy and like the, the, the accept terms and conditions? <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea, but for my thing Oof. is it's like, if you read it, would you opt <laughs> to walk away and not use that tool? And if the answer is like, no matter what it says, you have to use the tool, you're going to use the tool, then, I mean, there's not a lot of point in reading it, yeah. um, except to 
and be informed about what you are and aren't giving away. Mm-hmm. But that's that's the thing about those. And I feel like they're so cumbersome that everybody just clicks through them. Nobody actually reads them anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So for all I know, we've all signed off to allow all of our lives to be, you know, reproduced in film or novel form by AI yeah. bots in the future. Yeah, who knows? As long as it's not that snarky one that gave side eye at that conference. That was a little terrifying. <sighs> I don't know this one. Oh, I sh- maybe I didn't share it in the whole uh, in the entire. No, Slack it's like channel. ringing a bell, but I can't find it in my limited so, brain capacity. There was, a, I think it was a world conference, and they had like six or seven like actual AI. Oh wait, like, was it the, the faces? Humanoids. and they had faces. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember and, this. And one of them it's was creepy. pretty advanced with facial expression. So one of them was being sarcastic about like whether or not it would destroy humanity, like which the sarcasm wasn't appreciated, <laughs> I don't think. And then one of them gave an answer and then like gave total side eye to the person who asked it. And they've had like a close up of it and it's terrifying. It's like, yeah, if, if I that do remember AI this. knows what that facial expression means. Now, AIs are terrible with faces and hands right now as they're doing imagery, mm-hmm. but still it was just like, okay, that's creepy. Yeah. I mean, well, you've also got Harrison Ford was de-aged using AI for the new Indiana Jones film. Really? Yeah, he acted and played a younger version of himself, and they just used AI to de-age him. And so then it's like, okay, so can they go make, can they take all the footage we have of Harrison Ford and make three more movies without him ever having to show up? Like, and that's, again, that's a huge, like, you know, a huge issue that needs to be resolved. Wow. So I think what we've kind of come up with, though, is that AI can be used ethically for content. It's probably Mm -hmm. not going to be your start to finish. You type in a prompt and it gives you something and you just publish that without reading it. But, you know, get over writer's block, get past your Mm -hmm. procrastination hump, get ideas, get an outline, have an outline, get get content ideas. Um, I like your idea of expanding on it. Or I used it once to like I wrote way too much. And I was like, condense <laughs> this into four sentences. Um, and it did. And it was really interesting. But yeah, just, you know, it still needs, it's a toddler. It still needs guidance, <laughs> needs some hand holding, uh-huh. needs that adult in the room, making sure that everything is, uh, is copacetic. And yeah. yeah, just for a little bit of like cross promotion, just like if you want to learn more ways about how you can use like HubSpot's content assistant, and probably chat spot too. We're going to be uh, showcasing that on our YouTube channel in the future. Also along with our Instagram. So just like be on the lookout for that. But yeah. I love a soft And cell. I think <laughs> you can find us on YouTube if you just look for Antidote 71. It should be a, should a nice. Should be at Antidote 71. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We did set that up. So um, yeah. It, exciting yeah. so things going on with the youtube channel we'll have to talk that should be an episode at some point when we've got more stuff there we can bring megan on to talk about some of that stuff Ugh. too megan, i know people have been doing demos queen. like the screen uh like screen recording demos of things i've seen that happening and i know jamie was talking about one the other day so mm-hmm. no one's asked me to do one yet so i'm still good like still working just on like, a format for baby. it so Bloodless. got it so you're um got it so you're you're experimenting with it to figure out the format before you roll it out more broadly. Yep. Our first one will be a uh, sort of SEO how to of some like easy things you can do to like, uh, I don't remember exactly what they, I haven't seen it yet because <laughs> we're still in the process of finishing recording, but yeah, it'll be good. Well, that'll be good. Lots more to come. Um, are you going to cover how AI can help you with SEO in that one or no? That'll definitely be hit at one point. Uh, maybe not in this first one. Maybe that'll be like a part. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a part of a, a, a broadly series of like SEO how tos. So we'll see how it ends up turning out. I'm All excited right, well, to see it. Hopefully, our uh, our robot overlords will let us live another day, and we'll continue to move forward and not have all of our content stolen by you know AI. Here's hoping. And that's a wrap for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to connect and have more fun, you can find me on social media at Rich Mackey. It's just my name, super simple and easy. 
And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore the number seven, the number one across all social platforms as well. As for me, catch me at home sipping a craft cocktail expertly prepared by my in-home bartender who happens to be my husband. Stay tuned because we'll be back with another episode every other week featuring a brand new cocktail recipe, more tangents, and of course, we'll do our best to answer all your burning marketing questions. And if you have a question you'd like to send our way, head to ctapodcast.live to shoot us an email. Or even better, leave us a voice message. Remember those, Caitlin? On our hotline at 402-718-9971. Your question might make it into a future episode. For now, make sure to like, subscribe, and join us again next time for more fun and insightful discussions. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.